Okay, welcome back. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at uh, the five essentials uh, for children's ministry. Um, so we looked at um, what are, uh, you know, the five essentials and how we can invest in children for creating a heart that loves God or a godly heart in them. The first thing we looked at is that uh, children's uh, ministry must be gospel driven. The second one is that children's ministry must minister to, uh, you know, must be Bible saturated. Then the third one is that children's ministry must be, um, sorry. Okay, the first one is children's ministry must be God centered. Second one is just children's ministry must be Bible saturated. Thirdly, children's ministry must be gospel driven. And the fourth one is that children's ministry must minister to the whole family or the entire family. And the fifth one where we stopped was that children's ministry is all about serving uh, kids. So if you want um, children's ministers to be committed, it's important uh, that the leader, the, the children's church uh, pastor or the children's Sunday school superintendent or the leader, you know, uh, must uh, communicate the vision and the mission to the children's church ministers. You know, I don't call children's church ministers as children's church volunteers because when we use the word volunteer, they think, okay, I'm just volunteering to do something, but it's a more important role. They're actually there to teach God's word. So I call them ministers. It gives, you know, a, 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 a greater title or designation that brings about in clarity what is their responsibility. You know, so it's important for us uh, to communicate the vision and mission. Um, also important for us as leaders, the children's church pastors, you know, or leaders to plan the entire year. No, uh, to uh, plan what are the topics, the curriculum topics that we are going to teach, what are the activities, and ensure that, you know, uh, we communicate this to the children's church ministers and telling them, hey, all of these activities are not just to entertain children or to make children's church fun. Yes, we want to make it fun and exciting for them, but also these um, you know, activities should cater around the curriculum that we're teaching, the topics that we're teaching. It should cater uh, uh, to it should cater to fulfill or uh, point out or uh, you know to reach our goal uh, of our vision and our mission. Okay, so it's important for us to communicate all this, and uh, even as we choose teachers or children's church ministers, it's important to choose committed people, uh, train them, and during the training, you know, uh, teach them all of these things. What is a biblical basis and the mandate for uh, children's ministry? We will be looking at developmental needs of children at different age groups, so you can share it with them. Uh, it's important to teach them the learning styles of children, uh, how to prepare a lesson plan. So all of these things can go down in uh, the training. Also communicate during the training what is the vision and the mission, you know, and also what you have planned for the entire year. So, you know, the children's church ministers know, hey, this is, you know, uh, this is something serious we're getting into. This is not something that I can just come in and, you know, do a game or an activity or just tell a story or teach a memory verse and, you know, that's done for my my week when I'm scheduled, but this is more serious stuff that you know I'm uh, involving in, and they will understand the seriousness or the uh, the 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 depth of uh, the commitment based on how you portray it as a leader, all the things that you've planned, this, the structure thing, and, you know, guidance, the the guidelines you're giving them, you know, then they'll know, hey, there's something more concrete. And when I'm signing up, I need to, uh, I really need to be committed uh, to all of this. And all of this is very, very um, important. And also, of course, during the training, we can teach them how to prepare the lessons, how to use creative methods to uh, teach also, when we say that children's ministry is about serving kids, it's important that, um, you know, we have a good worship team, you know, um, important to have a good worship team, organize activities and uh, programs that would help them build them up in the word of God and the faith. Um, 
and it should not just be all about fun where you're just showing them some movie or you know or having some games or you know just talking to them and getting them to just meet their friends and go away but teaching them deeper truths from god's word also we i shared about mentoring children uh, so it's also getting into their lives you know uh, not just teaching them from the bible teaching them the, from the truth but they would know that hey this teacher uh, is uh, interested in my own life you know that is what uh, uh, you know uh, why people love jesus was not just he was there to teach them about the kingdom of god but he was interested in their lives he took time to you know, heal them uh, time to minister to them time to speak speak to them uh, show them their worth show them love show them compassion show them forgiveness that was important so it's important as teachers we can just come and teach them and say hey, okay this is my lesson this is the curriculum this is what i have to finish i just finish that and go but you know stopping by to say hey you know i didn't see you last week or uh, you're looking sad or you know, you're looking very excited today what's the matter and you know just celebrating with them enjoying with them uh, you know being with them in their difficulties if they're down looking upset what happened maybe their parents scolded them when they were driving up to church or something happened in the morning you know just ministering to them can uh, help them know that hey i'm coming to children's church just not for this teacher who's just loading me with uh, all of the bible but who genuinely interested in my life cares for me loves me you know and that is what really connects us to people right uh, we uh, connect to people uh, people who speak into our lives people who care for us people who uh, you know uh, uh, look out to help us um, you know uh, so uh, show uh, our love care and affection uh, those are the kind of people we easily connect and build a long term relationships and we share our life with them and we can share journey with them so mentoring is very very important also praying for uh, their needs uh, children can have uh, different behavioral issues they're struggling you know, praying for them uh, i remember you know children um, uh, doing things that are really uh, upsetting really wrong in school and um, the parents come and tell me and they say hey speak to them and i speak to them they don't want to you know give out the details and i tell them hey you know uh if you share with me i'm just here to help you i'm not just i'm not going to tell anything if you don't want me to tell it to your parents or anyone else i'm not going to do that i'll just keep it a secret and children have opened up and till to this day i've kept it a secret and till to this day those those children come back they've grown up into young adults now you know, one of them got even married i told you in december uh you know uh, just to connect with me to know that here yeah, is somebody i trust somebody who kept my secret somebody who didn't give it out to my uh, parents but really helped me so uh, you know uh, they would share their behavior problems uh, the challenges that they're going through later on in life they would also come back share with you tell you what's going uh, on in their lives and ask you to uh, pray also think of various activities which the, uh, can build them up you know i remember uh, the all the activities that i used to have when i was in children's church as a pastor everything was centered around uh, you know what they can learn from the word of god but in fun ways for example you know uh, once we had um, uh, uh, a breakfast potluck and so the breakfast potluck was the theme was fruit of the spirit so i told them get a breakfast that had some fruit in them uh, you know uh, uh, and uh, when you're sharing the breakfast with others you know you can tell them uh, what is the breakfast you bought what is the fruit you have put in that uh, and you know um, how you can connect that fruit to the fruit of the a uh, spirit okay so i uh, for example you know if a child gets an apple pie i love apple pie so i chose apple pie <laughs> you know if a child gets apple pie the child can uh, say you know i chose an apple pie and i chose apple because apple represents goodness um uh, apple is just so good to eat uh, it's good for health in the same way god is perfectly good and he wants us to be good and um, when we choose to do good things uh, you know the child can tell the rest of the class it's a way that we're telling god we love him and um, you know goodness we cannot be good all the time but we can ask god to help us and uh, he will help us to obey him and to be good and uh, that is how the fruit of goodness grows in our life 
no so simple way uh, uh, a fun activity but we're connecting it to something in the bible now uh, when we had our uh, when we have our christmas programs uh, you know we have um, uh, the first Sunday in December, we take them for outreach, where they go and minister to others. So the, we're teaching them that Christmas is not about what gifts you can get, but how you can go and reach out and pray and minister to others. So we have various things planned out for them uh, in advance. We also have, you know, uh, we get the list of the children uh, in the orphanage that we are going to minister to. And uh, we ask the orphanage for the needs of the children, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, for each of the children's needs, the challenges that they're facing. And then we connect that child, uh, one child in the orphanage to uh, two or three children in our children's church and tell them, hey, when you go to this orphanage, uh, you're going to pray for this girl. Just say you're going to pray for Sarita. Okay, and Sarita has these prayer needs and problems. So why don't you pray for Sarita? So we do this one month in advance. So they're praying for Sarita. And when they go to the orphanage, uh, they, they know they're not just going to sing some carols and they're not just going to give uh, some goodies and, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the ration or the, the food, groceries that they, sorry, the groceries that they bought for the children at the orphanage, but they're also going to minister. So then when we get into ministry time, they find out who Sarita is and three children go and pray for Sarita. And I say, you know, when you're praying, uh, ask in advance the Holy Spirit to give you uh, promises that you can speak over Sarita's life. And so children go and minister and they're so excited. And uh, to help the children, we already, you know, give them um, a prayer which they can pray. So every day in the, the, uh, the over the uh, last one month, they're actually praying that prayer for Sarita. And when they go there, they have the sheet, they pray, but they also, uh, you know, uh, have uh, memorized parts of the prayer so they can just pray. So it's it's a beautiful way of just, you know, re helping them to reach out. The second week in, in December, we have our Christmas party. But even that, uh, you know, I want children to know that Christmas party is not just fun, but also a way we, they can reach out to others. So I, you know, one Christmas party, I remember asking them to bring their maids' children, you know, and share the gospel with their maids' children and get a gift for their maids' children or uh, the maids in their school. They can invite their children uh, or the, the watchmen uh, uh, in their community or in their apartment building complex. Uh, one... Um, uh, a Christmas um, uh, uh, year, I remember uh, we did, uh, uh, you know, right from Adam, right up to Jesus' uh, crucifixion and his resurrection, we did a play and we invited children. So we had about 100 children, 100 plus children come from outside our children's church. And, uh, you know, um, uh, we did this salvation gospel through this, uh, through this whole play that the children did. It was wonderful. Uh, another uh, Christmas, I remember, you know, uh, asking children uh, in each class uh, to use their own creativity and come up with skits. And I told them to go to the genealogy in Matthew chapter one and to choose one character in that in the genealogy of Jesus and to enact uh, any one a narrative or part of the story or part of the life of that uh, person but they, they they shouldn't speak out or tell what the person they are enacting and the rest of the children's church have to guess the character that they are enacting so they choose a person in the genealogy they enact a uh, scene in the person's life and then share a little bit about that person but uh, not giving out details of the name and then the rest of the children have to you know identify the person uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, you know whom they have chosen in the genealogy so creative things like this which we can think about and do uh, and another uh, uh, activity i remember uh, is something called the kingdom builders club i i think this is just was purely uh, everything is just purely led by the holy spirit but Kingdom Builders Club, I just thought of having uh, uh, bringing about these clubs where children had to sign up either for uh, these clubs, which is singing, arts and crafts, healing and deliverance, evangelism, dance and choreography, memorizing and oratory. So we had this uh, six clubs and children had to choose these clubs based on their talents. Um, uh, and in these clubs, we actually did not just teach them how to sing better, sing in tune, sing with the right notes, 
by and healing and deliverance uh, we taught them from the healing and deliverance uh, apc publication the thing, the 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 same publication the uh, the course that you had uh, learned evangelism how to evangelize dance and choreography we just don't teach them about dance and choreography steps but how to release the supernatural through all of this now how to release the supernatural when they dance they're doing choreography and uh, when they when they're singing uh, uh, when arts and crafts you know when they're painting so uh, we don't just don't teach them how to paint we had people in our con uh, from our congregation adult church who were good in these areas but when i brief them i said hey those don't teach them the skills but teach them how they can release the supernatural through these things and so it was uh, you know I, I i've seen in some churches uh, on their stage when they're having worship they have these artists just uh, paint and draw and then the holy spirit is guiding them and then the holy spirit releases a word of knowledge of wisdom and they say hey this painting is for such and such a person and when the person who you know uh, identifies with that painting their life they come and take it and they speak they speak over them and they release god's word and the whole life and destiny of that person is changed just because of one painting you know it's just so powerful and i knew there was something more to this kingdom builders club and you know um, i i i brought it about of course it, the last one was memorizing an oratory where we're teaching them how to memorize scripture and how to preach scripture you know how to preach so i knew there was more to this but i did not know what more was there rather than just teaching them the skills and i remember that year i went to visit my sisters who live in the us and one of my sister drove me up to uh, this church in um, uh, redding california which i really love the pastor um, they are like uh, you know just moving they're naturally supernatural and that that um, uh, week when I'd gone, there was this lady who was talking about how they can use all of art and craft and dance and choreography and singing and song, how they can release a supernatural. And I was just so amazed because I thought, hey, God has brought me at the right appointed time uh, to show me how much, uh, you know, there's so much more to just this Kingdom Builders Club that he had asked me to start, but how to release a supernatural. And then this person who was teaching, she has written a book on how to release the supernatural through all of these uh, art forms, you know, and she says, who has come from the furthest part of the world? So everyone was shouting different parts of the world. We had, we had different people come from different parts of the world to this church. And um, somebody behind me who, uh, you know, I introduced myself before the church service started, they said, India, India. And this lady said, who is from India? So I stood up and she said, please come up in front. And then I went up in front and then she gave me a book that she's written. And when I looked at it, it was how to, it was about, you know, creativity, how to be more creative. And I was like, God, first of all, I'm not a creative person. And, you know, I've, uh, I don't have any creative skills. Uh, if I had received a book from the senior pastor, something about theology, which I really love, which would help me. But when I went back to my seat and I sat and I was firstly disappointed that the senior pastor was not speaking. It was this lady and I have nothing to do with art and craft and creativity. But the things that she said, you know, my hair just stood up. And then I looked at the book. It was how to release a supernatural through all of this, what we had, I had initiated in a children's church. And I came back. You know, I read that book um, when I was there on my holiday, came back, the Lord is laying so many things. I prepared a PowerPoint. I just presented to our children. Our children just took it. I mean, I could just see it going into them. They received it. And then that um, the end of the year, you know, God told me, get the children to lead the service. So they led the service from, you know, from leading worship to making the declaration, even preaching. We had uh, some two of our uh, uh, older children preach. And, uh, you know, we had children doing dance and choreography. And two of them painted and released the word of uh, God, what God was telling them to paint and how they released it. And people, the adults came and took the painting. And then we had all our children who were went through this whole APC publication on uh, healing and deliverance. They stood up in front and they asked adults to come and they prayed for them. It was just so powerful. I, can, I can't tell you how powerful. I was just way too shocked saying, hey, these are my kids in children's church. I mean, it was just so powerful. It was just so amazing. So, you know, um, the Holy Spirit God, and God has such 
wonderful creative ideas for our children uh, if we are just passionate about you know doing it for them waiting on the holy spirit i'm not a creative person at all uh, but i serve a creative god he just gives me i have a download of creative ideas from him every time i do anything it's just a download i know it's just god and so you know um, you can take children's ministries to such a level that god wants us and do such great things but children really learn and benefit and children just loved uh, the kingdom builders uh, uh, club okay so children's ministry is all about serving children and um, and just god will give you those amazing ideas okay um, the next topic we'll move on to is the developmental needs of children we look at the developmental needs of children various age groups uh, before we do that uh, does anyone have any questions anyone wants to share anything all of you with me in class okay yes, yes okay okay any yes, thank you we are here <laughs> thank you success yeah okay any questions anything you'd like to share anything you'd like to say i'm also here mom <laughs> thank you lubega uh, um, what I want to uh, say, um, the role of parents in the life of the children. Because I discovered that these days many parents are not paying full attention for the children. In such case, what did the teacher do? Okay, in uh, what do you what is uh, some of the ideas? What do you what do you think others? What do you think we can do before I share? Uh, and uh, what I, I asked, actually asked a question, mm -hmm. because we noticed that some parents are not, they are, they, are, they are taking it to the other way around, you know, showing the parents, the children, the way of the law. But you see some parents will take their children more to the trees, to party, than planting the word of God in them. And uh, even buy them some plots that will not that will not show example. For example, I I, uh, I went to go and buy. I went for a shopping, and uh, a parent buying a uh, trouser that opened uh, that opened, and he knew that uh, that is some trousers for the two years old child. And I, I was I was touched. I, I told I just spoke with the lady. Uh, the woman said. I think uh, this child is too small to wearing this kind of thing because by the time he grows up and he see the past picture, how she dressed like a, 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 we normally use the language like a tout. It, it, this will register his, a, a, in his brain and they continue this lifestyle. So what do we do in such, because parent must give you a consent before you can be able to discuss with their kids, even in the church. You see, some people, some parents will come in the church. No, don't, don't do my children this. This, my children this. This, I want to bring. What do we do in that regard? Yes, I understand uh, uh, your concern and also your question, and it's also a challenge for us in our children's church. So yes, we'll we'll hear Abu ma, Bakr. Ma, yes, my in addition to what uh, Pastor Sosa just said. We have some parents that they used to send their daughter to concubine to go and collect something from their concubine, and they are Christian. And they have some parents, they ask their children to go and buy alcohol for them. And we are teaching them um, something that is um, opposite of those things in the church. And in addition to what Pastor Sosset just said, what are we going to do in such situations, man? So I just had that, those two points. And what you have said already. Yes, I understand the concern. Anyone wants to share what we can do? What can be done? Uh, 
I think what uh, we can do best in the given scenarios is we can't change the parents. We can't uh, tell them, you know, uh, uh, there are times when we can, you know, prayerfully minister to them, speak to them, uh, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to also speak and help them. But what we have in our hands or what God has given to us is these children. So what we best can do is teach them from God's word. Tell them what is right and wrong. You know, that's what the word of God says. Train up a child in the way that he should uh, go, you know. And uh, uh, like we also read in, uh, you know, Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 15, you know, that it is, uh, that the word of God is wise for salvation, you know. Um, because when, when Timothy is acquainted with the, the sacred writings, says, it, Paul is saying, this has made you wise for uh, salvation. And also, you know, we, um, uh, uh, we saw that it's a power of God for salvation. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. So what best we can do is just teach them the word of God. Just show them from scripture. You you know the challenges the children are facing. You can see how their parents are bringing them, guiding them. So what you can do is encounter them with the truth in God's word. You can teach them from God's word. Uh, you can tell them, you can live out that, uh, that lifestyle in children's church, help them, also speak to them you know, um, uh, about the way they dress, the way they behave. We do that in our own children's church. But uh, it can be a challenge because the child can be thinking, you know, hey, my parents are not telling me anything. My parents saw me dressed like this. They brought me and left me in children's church. I don't know why the children's church teacher or the, uh, the pastor has a problem. So then that can be a little difficult. But what we can do is how can we honor God with our bodies? How can we honor God the way we speak, the way we dress, the way we act, the way we think? So what you are doing basically is just presenting the truth and the truth will set them free. Okay, Children are not too naive not to know what is right and wrong. You know, when you teach them what is right and wrong, they will do what is right. Uh, they would listen to their teachers. Uh, like, you know, I have uh, a couple of my cousins who are teachers and, you know, uh, they will they will go. Uh, and one of my cousins uh, is a, a teacher for grade one. And she says that when I tell the children, you know, don't dress up. Uh, in these kind of dresses because you know these kind of dresses are very heavy for you you won't be able to stay in these dresses the whole day and going to the restroom will be difficult you might fall you know put nice uh, frocks pretty frocks which are uh, easy for you to start. they will just go tell their parent exactly that and they will tell their parent teachers told me to wear this I will wear this I will not wear that and she says all the children will come in the way I told them to dress but she says it's challenging with the parents and you tell them they don't I try to understand and she said and I tell them you know children that is why God says you know children um, we need to be like ch little children because they trust whatever you tell them and they listen to their teacher the teacher tells them do this they'll exactly do that so we can have a few children who would you know, defy your orders, but then they eventually come about and come around and listening. So it's important that when we see this and the parents are not trying to understand uh, and you are trying to communicate to them, the parents are not, the best thing that we can do is teach children. They will listen, they will understand, uh, and they will eventually follow. And we just pray for them. All we do, we can just uphold them before God. And I have I have seen that in, in our children's church. Children, I prayed for a couple of them. You know, now they have grown up. I attended two of their, uh, uh, two of them got married in December. Both of them went through a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties when they were in children's church in teen years. I remember their parents telling me how we cried out to God, you know, and how God has restored their uh, lives. So it's God who works in their lives, the Holy Spirit. And we need to just be faithful and sincere. And it is Him who works in their uh, lives. The other thing how we can really help uh, parents like uh, success was saying what can we do is all the things that I mentioned, you know, get the the, the parents, uh, uh, you know, into the uh, WhatsApp group, tell them what was taught, tell them what's the memory verse, what the children have to apply during the week and get them to apply it. It also helps the parents to learn, 
you know we think that parents might not learn parents might not son but you know, just them reading the holy spirit can work in their lives they can also apply those lessons while teaching their children the memory verse while reiterating the truths in the story it can minister to them it can uh, work in their lives but most importantly children's ministry we need to really pray i think prayer is any any ministry any that we are involved in we need to just pray because it's 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 god who just gives the breakthrough it's god who just works uh, in their lives in their families so it's difficult even uh, with children their own parents asking them to go and get alcohol and and all of that uh, is challenging we had a child in our own children's church you know for the christmas party their non christian friends in their class said hey you all drink wine during a church service right and so he thought the communion wine and so you know um, why don't you get alcohol so he actually went and got alcohol so when the parents there was Scott the parents are called and he said why did you do this he said we drink wine in uh, in church you know for the communion uh, and the the parent was shocked and you know immediately called me and i had to meet him on uh, sunday and i i ministered to the child and helped the child see uh, what was wrong in what he did and he understood and now that child is you know serving in church so wonderfully and so powerfully just just such a wonderful uh, uh you know uh, 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 work he does in ministering just being available in various areas to minister every sunday in church and i see that i'm just so truly thankful to god and the holy spirit for working in his life uh, so prayer is important being faithful committed teaching speaking about things uh, we also have teen sessions where we address all of these things to teenagers speak to them talk about things how they have to dress what, the world dresses like this why shouldn't we dress the world does this partying drinking why shouldn't we do it talk about those things it's important uh, to discuss it's important to uh, you know talk about even about sexuality about sex and on all of those things it's very important you know to talk to teenage children about all of these things so that they're educated they they don't go and once they know the truth they don't go looking for truth in the wrong places but when they are uh, encountered with uh, the lies of the enemy when they face situations they can counter it with the truth did that help Yes, that will help. That is okay. Thank you, Abu Baker. Thank you, success. Okay, so we'll move on to our next topic. Uh, the next topic is uh, uh, the developmental needs for children. We're going to study about the developmental needs of children in different uh, age groups. Okay. Um, so, you know, uh, for e in each one of us, in even in children, God has built a pattern for development so understanding what is uh, a typical of each age and stage of development in in children's lives or the children that we are ministering to in children's church or sunday school will help us better understand their needs their felt needs and be able to communicate that felt needs uh, in the way that we teach and minister uh, to them it will also help us prepare our lessons and the activities that we want to you know uh, get them involved in or the games that we want to get them involved in we can do it accordingly once we understand the developmental needs Needs of children and even when we narrate narratives for them we can bring about uh, you know truths and how it will help them uh, you know uh, help their uh, needs their felt needs and also start the lesson with their felt needs because you know children can will connect to your lesson or what you're going to teach them if you uh, relate to them with their felt need but if you say hey Today, everybody, I'm going to talk to you about obedience. The children say, oh, no, we've heard that so many times throughout the whole week. Parents are telling us obey. Teachers are telling us to obey. Oh, we're going to learn about faith. Oh, no. When you come to church, it's only about faith. You know, so these are some of the topics that, you know, you are going to communicate to them. But, you know, start with their felt need. So once they know, you know, hey, yeah, this is what I'm going through. Uh, this is what I'm experiencing. So let me listen to the teacher, how I can overcome it, how my need can be uh, met. Okay. 
So before we look at the developmental needs of children in each age group, let's look at the developmental needs that are common to children in all age group. Okay. The first thing is that, um, you know, this is common to children in all age groups. There's a need for physical activity. You know, uh, children need to exercise and develop their growing bodies through physical activities uh, that develop both their uh, large and small muscles and motor skills. Okay, uh, so the large motor skills concern the development of their larger muscles, you know, uh, their hands, their uh, their feet, their thighs. So, you know, like uh, they need to run, they need to jump, they need to throw things, hopping, balancing on one foot. And the small motor skills are responsible for, you know, their, their hands, their fingers, you know, grasping things, holding things, whether it's a pen, pencil, cutting, craft work, you know, stitching or um, even, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, clay modeling, whatever. So we need to ensure that in our children's church and Sunday school, uh, uh, we're not just teaching children a narrative and some truths, but also involves some games time, connecting the game to your lesson, some attention getters, some object lessons, some activity, a skit that they can enact of what they have listened to, or uh, you know, case scenarios of uh, enacting how they can apply what they have learned. Uh, it can even be drawing puzzles, uh, coloring, craft activity, uh, which children would love to do. You know, I thought you know, craft and uh, uh, craft work and cutting and all those things, older children might not enjoy it, especially children in 8th, 9th and 10th grade. But I was surprised when we had our kids conference or our VBS vacation Bible school, the children, uh, I mean, teens, no, not children, teens in 8th, 9th and 10th, they love the craft work. They look forward for the craft work. So children at all ages, even teens, preteens, love so uh, activities. So give them some games, activities, attention getters, craft work that will connect to your lesson, that will connect to their felt need. The second one is the need for competence and uh, achievement. Okay, This is something that is common for children in, in all ages, especially children who are young adolescents, teens, preteens, so feeling very self-conscious, uh, self-conscious about how they're, they're looking, they're growing, uh, they're unsure of their talents and abilities. And we need to give them or uh, create opportunities for them to explore a wide variety of experiences uh, and uh, interest to use their uh, talents. Okay, uh, give them opportunities where they can demonstrate themselves. They can know their talents. They can realize, hey, I'm good at this. I'm good at that. You know, um, and uh, you know, what are the things they can do really well? So. Uh, you know, at APC, because I'm from APC, you know, I'm just talking about our children's church, we create opportunities for children uh, to use their talents to and uh, opportunities for them to explore their talents. For example, you know, when we have our general session, uh, we, we have some children who are part of our worship team who love to sing. You know, of course, we get them to go through auditioning and, you know, we have our worship pastor uh, help in teaching them. Uh, some of them who play instruments do so. They lead worship, they pray. Uh, our declaration, you know, we have different children come and uh, declare God's uh, lead in the declaration. You know, we have children who pray for the offering, pray for some of them who are helping us in projecting the PowerPoints for worship. Some children, uh, because we don't meet in our own facility, you know, we have to do a pack up and the setup so some children help us at pack up they even you know help us in praying for others and of course we had uh the kingdom builders club which i explained so it was an opportunity where they identified their talents and they grew in their talents and how to release the supernatural through those uh, clubs which they were in uh, we also, like I said, we have Bible quiz, we have skits, we have something called a Bible match between the Bible boys and the gospel girls, you know, so uh, we have our kids conference during our kids conference, we have talent competition, singing, painting competition, various uh, 
uh, competitions where they're able to you know discover themselves they're able to sh you know portray their uh, or showcase their talents so you know organize all of these but based on the bible so that they're going back to the word of god they're learning it's helping them and also helps them to uh, you know identify their skills and um, achieve in their respective skills and talents and the gifts that god has uh, given uh, to them okay the need for self definition okay children who are uh, developing uh, you know require a lot of opportunities to discover who they are you know what they are becoming as well as how they relate to the world around them. So it's important for us to talk about their identity in Christ. So we teach them one course that we have, or one of the topics for our children's church curriculum is who we are in Christ. You know, so we have it written down for grades two to four, five to seven, eight to 10, different levels, uh, lessons, seven lessons uh, on that. Uh, we also have something called um, uh, adolescent sessions or teen sessions where we're talking about self-image, self-value, uh, what are the, the, the challenges that teens and preteens uh, face that, you know, uh, hinder their self-image, their self-value. So it's important for us to build their identity in Christ and also through these courses and teen sessions, just build their identity. So they're strongly grounded and rooted in their uh, identity. They have their value in Christ and that will take them a long way and help them, okay? The fourth one is the need for creative expression. You know, as children's minds and bodies are rapidly growing and changing the fast pace, they are more involved in the world around them slowly you know, just beyond home and family. So we need to create uh, uh, creative expressions that are essential to their specific development. Now, these opportunities help children to develop an um, understanding or an acceptance of themselves, even as they are speaking, singing, writing, dancing, you know, doing drama, skits, uh, or visual arts just to express their feelings, their interests, their thoughts, their talents, and their uh, abilities. So I mentioned quite a lot of the things that we do, like in Christmas time, you know, we get children in their respective classes. We don't help them out as teachers. We just get let them do it. And the wonderful creative ideas they come up with is so good. The little time that they have, you know, at the kids' conference where we get them to uh, showcase their talents to different uh, opportunities we give them the kingdom builders club uh, participating in adult church where they lead worship or they just minister you know or uh, i remember one time we had uh, the fruit of the spirit through art so i told them you know whatever area you're skilled in or talented in whether it's cooking whether it's baking whether it's singing playing an instrument uh, painting or mimicry or whatever uh, you know you present the fruit of the spirit through that so we had children come and sing songs uh, based on love or the goodness of God or playing an instrument, you know, a song that portrays uh, one of the fruit of the spirit or, you know, a painting uh, or, you know, some a bead that they made, a hand, a, a wristband, something, you know, through that, how they can, uh, you know, minister the fruit of the spirit or showcase the fruit of the spirit through art. So just various creative things that we can uh, think where they can express their uh, creativity. Okay. And the, uh, the next one is a need for uh, positive social interaction. Okay. Um, you know, although the family is of uh, primary importance to children, uh, they all are um, uh, in the need of uh, increasing opportunities to experience uh, positive relationships with uh, the world around them, whether it or the family outside the family, whether it's their peers, it's their uh, seniors in in children's church or in 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 school or their teachers. And these uh, positive relationships that they build, you know, can provide them comfort, support, security, even as they express uh, or experience new ideas, 
new views, values, and uh, feelings. So in children's church or in Sunday school, you know, we need to help children build relationship with others in their class, uh, uh, build healthy friendship with their peers, also, you know, build a, a good relationship with their teachers. So mentoring sessions really help, you know, where teachers, when they really mentor, you know, um, they can speak into the child's life. They can, uh, when the child is going through some challenges, difficulties, which you've heard from their parents, the child is expressed, you can, um, you know, minister to them. Uh, uh, you know, you have a whole year where you are interacting with them. And then I have the, uh, the teachers at the end of the year write a note for each child. Because the child is going to the next class and the same teacher will not continue teaching the child in the next class. So write down the areas, the challenges, the difficulties uh, that the child is facing, the areas that they have helped them, uh, what they have done so far, what needs to be done in the future. And that report is passed on to the next uh, teacher and the next teacher takes it on, or uh, just helps and mentors the children. So, you know, this way we can build a positive social interaction and help the child as um, well, okay? The next thing is the need for structure and clear limits. You know, children, even as they're growing, especially teens and preteens, some of them earlier than that nowadays, you know, uh, sorry, some of them earlier than them, that, you know, they're looking for independence, they're looking for freedom, they, but they also need security of structure and clear limits uh, to help them to develop their skills, um, you know, also uh, uh, guidelines on how they can be responsible, how they can use their imagination, their creativity uh, in the, you know, framework that you set for them, uh, you know, and how they can uh, be trustworthy and dependable, okay? So we need to lay structures and clear limits. So, for example, learning their memory versus some responsibility that we can give them reading the scripture portions i told you you know the worksheets that we give them they have scripture portions which they have to read uh, so we make them responsible say hey i want you to do this and if they're not able to do it you know the next class why how can i help you know and ask them what did they study what did they learn and you know what are the truths that they applied and you know also application of the lesson how did they act upon it during the week so they come back the next sunday they share it with you so when you have these guidelines when you have these clear limits and structures that you place then children will develop skills of being responsible uh, how they can use their imagination, creativity in applying what they have learned, making the truths apply, uh, applicable in their lives, and also how the teacher looks at them to be trustworthy and dependable, and how they can prove themselves to be trustworthy and uh, dependable. Okay. Uh, the next one is, uh, uh, the last one is a strong attachment with positive adults. You know, all children... Uh, need the skills to establish a strong attachment to at least one positive adult outside the family and who else can it be than their teacher you know uh, so that they can bounce back when they go through difficulties um, uh, they have the strong attachment with the teacher uh, where they're learning positive things and um, you know you can be that positive caring adult in their lives you can be the one who represents jesus to them um, and they will always you know if they fall in love with you you know they will always match or compare you to what the others the other adults are doing in their life and say hey my children's church teacher does not drink does not smoke doesn't dress like this doesn't speak like this doesn't use these words and uh, you know i think what he's doing he or she is doing right and i love them i'm just going to follow them so you become like a role model you become like a, what do you say their fan you know they might have sports fan or, you know uh, uh, you know movie stars who they they you know, when children copy, imitate movie stars and sports fan, they do their, they dress exactly like them. They, you know, they, the hairdo is exactly like them. They speak exactly like them, you know, and they live exactly like them, walk or talk like them. So you be, can become that role model in their life where they're just looking at you and they're just learning from your life. And um, you can be that strong 
uh, attachment, that positive adult who is, you know, caring for them, who is um, uh, making that strong impact and they're just imbibing you, they're just following you. And like Paul says, you know, imitate me like I imitate Christ, you know, and like some of his, um, his um, mentors have done, like Timothy and others, just imitated Paul. You know, children can imitate you. So again, coming back to what success and Abu Bakr had, um, uh, you know, uh, shared their burden about children and what we can do, you can be that strong, positive adult. Okay, I thought we can even look at the developmental needs of children in three to four and five to six, but we don't have time for that now. Any questions anyone else has? We the next class, we will look at the developmental needs of children in specific age groups. We'll start from children in ages three to four. Any questions anyone else, anyone has? Anything you'd like to share, say? No question, I'm OK. Thank you, ma. Thank you, success. OK, thank you, everyone, for joining the the class today. I hope it was helpful. Uh, I'll see you next Tuesday. Have a blessed week. This Friday, we won't meet for our uh, uh, for TTP class, for first Timothy class. Okay. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you all. Thank you. Uh, please, Issa, uh, are we not meeting on Thursday? Sorry? We have another lecture on Thursday, right? We have another lecture now. Friday. Friday. Friday, we have of first Friday. Timothy, but Friday, since we're having our Christian Leaders Conference, we don't have classes uh, tomorrow, the afternoon, Friday. Yes. Yes, okay. That's all right. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you, Ma. Thank, Thank you, Abu Baker. Thank you, Rosalind.